Hey guys, welcome back to the IFIC channel. It is Aisha here, back with another video. So today, it is food for thought, and today, I'm going to be feeding Ray Baker. Now, if you guys don't know who Ray is, she is a very dear friend of mine, and she is a, one of my spiritual sisters, and I'm actually very excited for you guys to meet her. We're all, we do ministry together, and we also have a duo called the Zamar Duo. So I'm actually really excited to cook for her and for the questions that God helped me, you know, write out for her. I'm really excited. Hallelujah. Let's get to it. Testing one, two, three. Hello. I am back, y'all. Listen. So what are we going to cook today? Okay, so we cook in plantains, refried beans, uh, broccoli. I promise you that ain't no... Uh, pickle juice um so you know i'm just showing y'all what we gonna use so the first thing is open up the pickle juice just kidding it is oil like i always say we reuse oil i don't waste no oil in the house unless if it's bleak okay so you know you open up that thing you dump it into this pan you want to make sure you have a very big pan to fry the plantains all right be careful don't dip your finger in the hot oil now we over here opening up the thing i was sizing up the plantains because i was trying to make sure you know i give her the biggest one because you know she a guest so i'm just showing you here how to cut it so you cut the ends first and then after that you'll see because honey i was struggling to take that peel off you make a slit all the way down and then you slide the knife down yep just like that aisha good job all right <laughs> So now you take that thing off, you know, peel it off one by one. Y'all, you know, you know, but as a backstory, you know, I never used to like fried plantain, <laughs> but now I do. All right. And I promise y'all later in the video, uh, I season that thing. I season everything. Okay. Make sure to season that thing. All right. Uh, fun fact too, a plantain is not a banana. Okay, it looks like a banana, but it ain't no banana. It's weird. I don't know how to explain it. But yeah. So now you want to make sure after you fry, you prep a bowl and you put some paper towel in it so it could dry because you don't want that thing to be soily and og like soggy and nasty. Uh-uh. So here it's the setup. You know, make sure it's very close, okay? Now, the trick that I always use, which is very hazardous, please be careful when you're doing this. Throw some water in the oil, okay? That's, that's when you know it's hot, but you want to make sure that you ain't close to it because you ain't want to get burnt. Okay, so, all right, here we go. So, here is me. I'm dropping the plantains one by one, dropping them the kids off in the oil. All right, there we go. Yep. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Already sizzling getting ready to be in my belly that almost rhymed but yeah so you cook that thing up i'm telling y'all fried plantain is good there are two ways to fry it you could either fry it green like how i did um and that's when it's like not sweet or you can fry it when it's ripe, when it's yellow and it'll be sweet it's really good make sure to time that thing don't let that thing be burnt all right the next thing i did was do the broccoli listen i wasn't getting a raw broccoli <laughs> so you beat that bag make sure everything is like you know make sure that, that thing is loosened okay i didn't know what how many minutes to warm that thing up i just saw frozen vegetable on the microwave and i just clicked that thing and i just rolled with it all right so there you go now the plantains are done Ooh, that thing look crispy listen Make sure you take that thing out. Listen, don't put your hands in oil. You will burn. It will burn your fingers. So be careful. So you know now you dish it out and you let it, you know, um, soak up in the napkin. And there you go. Y'all, I don't know what happened to this clip, but you season that thing. So I put some lime. And then I put some adobe, adobe, adobe I, I, I don't know how to pronounce that seasoning. God forgive me. Oh, God forgive me. But I don't know how to pronounce that seasoning. But listen, adobe or something. I don't know. But you mix that thing up together. Listen, that thing be tasting right, boy. Tasting real nice. And I just covered it up. Now, on to the next step. So we're going to make sure the refried beans is good. Listen, y'all. 
like I always say, don't forget to spray Pamela in your pot, especially refried beans, because you know, refried beans, it be sticking on the pod. Make sure you spray that thing down. Y'all, I made sure to spray that thing down. I was not playing. Just use it. All right. Now, you know, you open up the refried beans. Yeah, open that thing up. Make sure to get that thing out. You know, pry out the can with the knife. And you get it out. Ooh, yes, Lord. Mmm, they was tasting right, too. Yep. All right. So it kind of looked nasty at first. <laughs> you know, especially when you get it from the pan. Like, the can. Sorry, not the pan. <laughs> so, you know, you got to, like, make sure you mix that thing. Because it do look nasty at first. But then it looked like this. It looked like regular refried beans. And it's so good, so tasty, so creamy. Listen. Hallelujah. Now it is time for the video. Hey guys, welcome back to the IFIC channel. It is Aisha here with Ray Baker. Hi. So if you guys don't know, Ray is one of my best friends. And she, we have, <laughs> our friendship has, how long has our friendship been? Like mm. four years. No way. Yeah, we've been friends for four years. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there was a lot of things, you know, a roller coaster, yeah, literally. <laughs> um, but it's the summer. Well, not, well, it's almost the summer. It's spring, you know, it's bright, you know, so, and we're doing this in the day, which is different because normally I do it in the night. But I actually have a fun fact real quick. I don't, I don't know if you could guess it or not, depending on if you watched all three of the Food for Thought videos. But, there's always something the same in all of the three Food for Thought videos. It's not the, like the environment, like the kitchen or anything, like not the space, but there's something on me that I've had. Do you, do you think you guess it? Can I talk to you? No. You get two more tries. Oh my gosh, okay. Um. <laughs> Something on you? Yes. That I wore. Your face. No, oh my gosh, wait. <laughs> Girl, that's your second guess. You got one more. Um, glasses? Nope. What? It was my shirt. I realized, well, I, I kind of realized that it was my shirt. shirt I time? wore the same shirt every time. Are you talking about the black one? Yeah. <laughs> the black one with the Nike. Yeah. And actually, that was her shirt. Fun fact. Actually, it was, actually, it was Tyra's shirt. It was Tyra's shirt, and then her shirt yeah. yeah so <laughs> yes so let's get started so I cooked Ray today um, some refried beans you know and she'll show it to you um, some fried plantains and some broccoli would you like to show it? go pick up your plate make sure that thing <laughs> don't spill hold on yeah you see how nice look how colorful <laughs> look at look at that. listen I could cook some like the plate. Yeah. And then also shout out to Mariah. Um, she uh, gave us the idea of using this sauce. So it's like mayo and ketchup, using it for like plantains, like fried plantains and stuff like that. So I just wanted to say that. See? So do you want to say grace before we start? <laughs> sure. That sounds like a plea. Lord, thank you, Jesus, for this fellowship, and thank you, Jesus, for all that you do through this channel, and thank you for the food, for God in your hands as you prepared it. Father, bless our hands and bless the food for the nourishment of our bodies. Cleanse it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> awesome. Verse, are you ready for these questions? It's really all over me. <laughs> okay. So just as a little background before we start, and I know I talked about it um, at the beginning, but Ray and I, um, we've been friends since um, high school pretty much. And you know, mm. yep. You always be saying. It's the truth, okay? Girl, I met you like. In 11th grade, mm. we were friends in 12th. I don't 12th. really start a relationship until my senior year. Yes, but <laughs> that was when we were in high school. So yeah, but that was only like one year. Okay, but, but we were in high school. That's the fact. 
down fact. We went to college and then we were in high school for one year together. Yes. Yes. And, and then, then we went to school together. Yes. And then after that, you know, thank you, Lord. Um, our path was redirected and we left school to pursue ministry full time and now we're here. Now we're part of the uh, ministries called Encounter Ministries together. Um, just like with other fr three friends. And yeah. So yeah, you can start eating good. Don't do that. That's gonna Don't do it. Okay, listen. <laughs> what do you think? Chewy. That's good. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. No, that's good. That's good. Okay, let's get started with the first question. So, what was your first impression of me when you first met me? <laughs> Did you think that our relationship would ever last? First of all, when I met her, I don't know if you saw the other food for thought, but Jay said <laughs> that she stared at him. Stared at him. And I said, she stared at me. When I first met her, and I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> she really did. So she's kind of rude, actually. I mean, it's not rude to stare at all, no. <laughs> but she just didn't say anything, so I didn't really know what to say. So I was like, okay. I was really, <laughs> just I kind of talked to everybody else, but I didn't really know where the relationship would go. Mm -hmm. I just knew. It was going somewhere. I would have never thought that we'd be doing ministry together. You know? Mm, you can say that again. Yeah, just like with the things um, that we both went through together and individually. Like, um, I never thought that we'd be doing ministry together, but look at God, okay? And just like um, I know Chris always says this, God turns our messes into messages, okay? <laughs> So the second question is, how did your parents have an impact on your life spiritually? How did they influence your relationship with God? Good. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, first of all, I come from a music family. Mm -hmm. So I grew up, everybody always had some type of instrument in their hand or they were like singing. Um, and my mom, she played Tamarine, <laughs> drums, and she sang, and she also preached and everything. And my dad, he played drums, guitar, bass. He also sang. But putting that together, that was able to shape me into the person that I am today because it kind of set me up for what God had in mind for my ministry, which is music. Mm -hmm. and through music, I've always used as a, as an outlet um, in my life when I would have trials or when I would just feel alone or just like when I would feel when I don't know what's going on. Music always made sense to me. Mm -hmm. Music was always there. Music always spoke volumes when I didn't know what to say. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I felt like they gave me. Um, they gave me my voice before I knew what my voice was, you know? Mm -hmm. It was uh, definitely something I'm grateful for because when I look back, if I didn't have the discipline that I did with music, I don't know where my focus would be. I don't know who I would be. And although it required a lot of time and sacrifice in my childhood, I still had a childhood, but it was like, mm -hmm. you know, practice rehearsal, eat, practice performance practice rehearsal for a psychic it was that that was basically my upbringing in addition to like you know of course I went outside and all that but my upbringing I felt like God was preparing me all throughout my upbringing just to travel and to understand how everything works in like a musician perspective and a traveler's perspective and a business perspective like just all the vantage points that you would need to know um, because I used to be in a band with my sisters and um, we played, you know, all different types of music or whatever. But from that experience, I was able to learn how to play together in a group and how to... And I was the leader of the band. I didn't even know... I was young at the time. I didn't know I was leader of the band, but he was 
he had me in that position to prepare me for something greater in the future. So I feel like they passed down the dedication and determination that they exemplified all throughout my childhood to me, which would bring me to today, <laughs> fulfilling my purpose of just wanting to really impact people through my music. I've always wanted to really, I've always had that. Like I always wanted to make people feel something. And now that I know that something is God, I want them to really feel how, how much he loves us. You know, it's just like with everything that I do because his love covers the multitude of sins. So yeah. that's what we can really promote and we would be helping the kingdom of God, <laughs> I feel. But yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and that's all part of it because it's like, you know, food for thought too, and I just wanted to say this, is it's fun. You know, like, you know, like it's pretty cool. It's very interactive, but it's not just getting to know the person, but to hear people's testimonies because everyone has a unique testimony. Everyone has different testimonies, but there can be similarities in there too. You know, it's like how people relate to others or, you know, certain things. And so I think it's pretty cool, like, to, you know, like, mm -hmm. relate that. Did you ever think that the path that you're currently on would be the path that you would have taken, leaving school to pursue full-time ministry? Girl, no. <laughs> <laughs> none of us. Wow. None of us. You were to ask 10, 10 year old Ray? No. Yeah. You were to ask. 18 year old Ray? No, I'm only 20. <laughs> That's only two years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, nope. But sometimes I talk to God about that too. I'll be like, so we really did that. <laughs> like, we're doing it. Like, this is the path we chose. Yeah. Um, and I absolutely don't regret it because it's something that if you can wake up and not feel regret or anxious about having to do something, you know, then that's when you know you found it, you know? It's like, that's when you know you found what you're looking for. Like, I wake up every day being like, God, what am I gonna do today? You know, like, what it is, cause <laughs> it's funny like that. I had to open myself up to his possibilities and all of those possibilities, like I said, they weren't, I didn't have those in mind, but his plans haven't even entered the hearts of me. So it's like, you know, I had to really learn how to be vulnerable with him. Yeah. With like God, because in a relationship, it takes a certain level of openness and vulnerability to really reason, as Kevin says, reason with God to ask what your purpose is, what do you think you should be doing, like, does this actually make you happy, are you doing this just because your parents said that you need to get into some type of schooling, mm -hmm. or are you doing this just because you're doing this until you can figure out what you want to do, you know, mm -hmm. it's just kind of like, a, I don't know, I just, from that experience I learned Don't discount any type of turn, negative or positive, because all of those contribute to the greater outcome of like your purpose and what you're called to do. Like mm -hmm. all of those shape your testimony and who you're going to be. So that's one thing that I learned from this experience of leaving school because I knew, to be honest, you always know you always know what you really love to do, you know, like, because you have, like, a deep knowing, you know, in your spirit. Yeah. And I always knew, because I almost gave up cello, like, I almost gave it up. I almost gave up the violin. <laughs> like, I almost gave it up because I was like, I'm not a classical player, like, why am I doing this? Yeah. And then, out of the blue, guy gave me my first piece. Mm -hmm. And that's what fueled me to continue to keep playing, because it was like, that's the way that I could express myself on an instrument that I didn't think was possible. The cello was one of those unique sounds that captivate you in a different type of way. 
that I didn't even know was possible. Yeah. So I always had a deep knowing after that, that you know, that the cello was going to be used for something. Mm -hmm. And so that I needed to continue down that path. And I wasn't like, you know, spiritually sound or anything like that. I just had a knowing mm -hmm. like that, that it would be used for, for greater. So it was just like, I, I know that I need to stay on this path, so I stayed on it because <laughs> I played cello for about two plus years. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just happy I didn't give it up because it's like, you know, God gave me the name for my cello. Her name is Hope. And she was my hope, you know, in my life. And I didn't know. And I was the type of person, you know, there's like people that type to name their instruments. Yeah, oh my god, this is like Jenna. Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> I'll be like, I don't, they'll be like, what, what's the name of your show? I'll be like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, God, God, Holy Spirit gave me that name, Pope. And it's been something I just can't stop talking about because it's, Pope is something that we should always have, you yeah. know? So it's like the fact that he would name my cello that, like when I go into schools and I'll tell them that, you know, their name is Hope, I could remind them that she was my hope during the time of trouble when I was alone and when I didn't really understand or when I was confused. Yes. You know, that she, I don't know, I just feel like God made her just for me. So I just want everybody to have that piece of hope delivered in the sound that he produces. And so yeah. that's why I really love, you know, music. That's kind of, how I feel about it. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, was music always the center of your life? Was there some point where you wanted to give it up and pursue other interests fully? Well, when I was going, deciding I was gonna go to school. Mm -hmm. Senior year, okay, let's just talk about it because senior year, y'all. <laughs> Y'all, I was like, who's going to school with these scores? <laughs> because I'm not the best test taker. <laughs> but like, if I study and I know what I'm talking about, I can talk to you about it. Mm -hmm. Like, I can talk to you about it all day long. Or... I'm just that type of person. I'm like a yeah person to person, <laughs> like inches, but like you know, person to paper. <laughs> but um. Yeah, my scores were so hot, <laughs> you know, for like the required testing, SAT, ACT. Um, and I was like, I don't, God, like, I don't know <laughs> if I'm going to school. Like, <laughs> like, get him out. Like, it's these scores. <laughs> okay. So, like, check, Georgia State, no. <laughs> Make no. <laughs> like, and I was just like, Okay, I know I'm going to school in state because yeah. hello in mm -hmm. state fees. You're right. <laughs> and hope. Hello. Reduce price, okay? Right. Listen, um, I'm so serious. Keep that GPA for hope. <laughs> but, um, because mm -hmm. you know, I keep raising it. Um, <laughs> but yeah. And then the funniest thing about school that I went to, <laughs> I know it's a God thing because I have filled out maybe two other schools. And, um, the school that I ended up going to was literally the last application I filed. Mm -hmm. And I was being very lazy about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it was like one of those just, that's how long the application was. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, it was like, name, blah, 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 blah. why you want to go here? And then has. submit. <laughs> like, that's how long it was. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I remember being like, I guess I could get in here. And I didn't, I didn't hear about the professor until somebody told me about her. I listened to her, I was like, she sounds really good. Mm -hmm. And um, so everything was just kind of after that, just like that, because then um, my professor, Wendy, she came to our school mm -hmm. and her professor. No, he didn't. He course, did not yeah, come. He didn't come. But the conductor did. Yes. And, and the bass professor, too. And the bass too. professor. And so it was just kind of like, God was trying to put that in my path, like, you know, you sent this application and then all of a sudden that this, this school is coming, you know, to your school. Yeah, I, you know, I was injured during the time. Like I had tendonitis and carpal tunnel. I was not even playing. So I, yeah, so we, 
we didn't expect to go to the school that we went to. Mm, yours is a whole different story. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, like, I just wasn't trying to go. Because I was like, I had been before, and I didn't really like what I saw. For real? Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> I had been before, and I didn't really like what I saw, but... When you go back and take a second look, things look different sometimes, you know? It's like when you go back and look again, it's like, oh, okay, like that was there. Like, I didn't see that before, you know? So it's like, when she came to the school and I played with her, I was like, oh, so this is it. Like, and, um, yeah, so. Gosh, what was the question? <laughs> oh my gosh. That's me. Was music always the center of your life? Was there some point where you wanted to give it up and pursue other interests? Yeah, girl. Because first of all, I couldn't even get into school with the things that I was getting in with. And mm -hmm. I had started out. It's just like, listen to your knower. <laughs> you know, listen to your knower, like your spirit. Mm -hmm. And I had started out, I said, you know what? I'm gonna do international business, that's my major. Mm. And I'm a minor in French because, bonjour, j'adore le français. So, I love French. So, I'm just like, let's do it. I but have it's no like, idea what she's saying, but. Girl, I said I love French. I'm just listening. <laughs> but yeah, like, I was like, I love French and like, hello, why not? And like, I also wanna do business and I also wanna travel the world. Mm -hmm. And, why not? Like, I can do it, you know? So yeah. it was just kind of like, cool. But then it was just kind of like, are you gonna regret that? Yeah. In the back of my mind, you know? Like, it was like, are you gonna, is that what you're supposed to be doing? <laughs> are you taking the safer route? Yeah. And it was like, uh, I mean, yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, listen. but I was just like, I think from then I was just kind of deciding that I didn't want to live any a life with the regrets. Yeah. Because it's like that's something that you have to hold like all the time. Did you write? And it's just like you'll be constantly reminded of that decision, you know? Yeah. So it's like if I can limit those decisions as much as possible, <laughs> eliminate them from my life as much as possible. Yes, eliminate. Then which I'm still living. <laughs> but um Especially big decisions, like if I can eliminate those as much as possible. Which is like, my whole life was surrounded by music, y'all. But I was trying to major in business. That didn't make sense. You know, it's like, like music was nowhere in the major that I was pursuing. And I was just like, it was a safety route. Because I was going to do the same thing. Right. Especially when I was injured. Because you can, you can get healed. And I mean, I was, during that time in 2015, listen, I call that the year of sin, okay? Cause that was I don't know what to call that, but I know a lot happened for everybody in 2015. Yeah, it was a whole mess. And long story short, I had carpal tunnel and um, my hands were inflamed. I couldn't even write. And it was to the point where I was gonna quit music. And I was going to pursue, you know, accounting, which doesn't make sense because I saw this <laughs> computer and a calculator, you know, things like that. So, you know, but I was going to take the safer route too, but God redirected my path. And um, our music teacher at the time took us down to Columbus um, to meet, you know, like my professor. And that's how I was able to go to that college too. That was the only one we visited, no? Hmm? That was the only one we visited? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the only one that we visited. That is funny like that. Yeah. And so, like, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Because <laughs> if we never went to um, our university, um, we would have never been, we wouldn't be here right now. We wouldn't have never linked up with the ministry that we're with. And it's amazing how God orders and directs your path, even when you don't even realize it, or even right. when you're not walking with God mm -hmm. at that specific moment. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, there was a lot of things that Ray had to go through in 2015, and a lot of things, you know, I mean, I was far away from God um, at that time. Um, yeah, and, during that year, that's yeah. when I lost my mom. Yeah. 
And so just a lot of grief, a lot of things that she was going through. I was living a homosexual lifestyle. I was in a relationship with a girl that I shouldn't have been in a relationship with. It was a whole mess I had. I was injured. And so it's just, like I said earlier, it's amazing how God turns your mess into messages. Um, thank you, Chris, for that quote. <laughs> um, but it's just so crazy how he really orders your steps, even when you don't even realize it. Our pastor always says that uh, he preached a message a couple of weeks ago. Um, there's always going to be pain, you know, during the process. There's going to be pain present during the process. To get, yeah, on purpose. And so it's very important to understand that that is part of the process. That is part of birthing out your destiny, birthing out your purpose. And not running away from it. And don't run away from it. So. Like I did. Yeah. And I mean, I. Don't run away for yeah. like three years and then come back and then realize that the root is bigger. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the root is still there. Just waiting to be uprooted. Mm -hmm. But you're gonna have to do the work. Yeah. With his help. Yes. Because he's the only one who could remove that thing. You just have to be willing mm -hmm. to allow him to expose so he could expel that thing, okay? <laughs> do you have any advice as to how um, any advice to maybe people and it, and it doesn't it's not limited to any age whether it they be young or older who have lost you know a parent do you have any advice you know there's not really advice for grieving <laughs> but there's you know i'm i'm reminded of well, my dad always tells me, you know, like, we can only, like, we can control ourselves. Like, we can only control ourselves when we're presented with certain things. And I think the thing that makes you who you are, the type of person that you are, is what you do after that's mm -hmm. happened. What you do after the dramatic experience. Because it's not like you won't see those pictures again. Because it's like you were there, you know, yeah. like, you know, you were there, like, um, I guess I would just say really dive deep into the pool of living water. Because it's like, you, you can only, that type of feeling can only come from God. And it's, it's a type of healing that you have to open yourself up to be vulnerable, like I said earlier. Um, something I had to learn because um, I kind of suppressed my feelings for like three years and they kind of came back up <laughs> all at once. And I didn't know what was going on, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it was like, you know, I don't know what was going on. Like all of my emotions were all, you know, happening all at the same time. You know, like that's what happens when you don't Really take time to recognize what your body is telling you or what your spirit man is telling you because sometimes your spirit man speaks to you physically like if you're sick all the time or you know if you're in a mood all the time or you know just stuff like that like that definitely affects you as a person and like what you will be produce after that dramatic event yeah. so I think it's just it's hard, but it's deciding who you want to be and how that will shape you. Mm -hmm. In your walk of purpose. Yeah. Because when I lost my mom, I felt like I lost the person that I was supposed to be looking up to, like the person that I was supposed to be modeled after. But God reminded me that I... I was created after him. You know, I'm creating his image. Yeah. It's, like, it's like, I can't be, all of my trust can't be in my mom, you know, like all of it can't, all the answers can't be found in them and everything that they've done. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, I just feel like there's a different revelation for everyone as far as where you are in that timeline, even your age and 
your maturity mm -hmm. and just even where you are in your current walk of life. Yeah. I, I feel like it's it's something you have to really be honest with yourself about mm -hmm. because it's not like I wanted to sit here and be like, oh, I put all my trust in my mom and I kind of put something in God. Mm -hmm. kinda, God doesn't kind of want our trust. He wants a whole lot of you, you know? So it's like he wants a relationship. He wants an actual relationship with that. That's gonna require all of you. Yeah. And keep in mind, the parents are a very big deal, and especially the mom. Like that's right. definitely yeah. said so in Proverbs. Um, but he he calls us to love him above anybody else. Mm -hmm. And he even himself said, "Who is my brother? Who is my mother?" <laughs> you know, right? He's it's, surely he, dead. He's Jesus surely dead. Knows that his sole purpose is to. Do. serve God mm -hmm. and to do his will yep. you know yeah despite what others may have said but he knows what God has spoken to him yes and so he has to do it you know no matter what the pain mm -hmm. because there will be pain I'm yeah. not gonna <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yes <laughs> like there's gonna be pain but like they say Kevin says sometimes the crushing mm -hmm. produces the wine yes the new wine and you can't put New wine and old wine skins. Yep. So it's something that you're gonna have to be okay with being not the same after this process. Because mm -hmm. in fact, that's the goal. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like you want to be better than where you were before. Yep. Sure. You know, yeah. you don't. Know, you want to be so close to God that you don't even you recognize yourself. You know, you're just like. I want people to see more of God in me than they have before. That's my prayer all the time. Like I said, I'll, every time people see me, every time people see things that I do, I want them to see more of you than, than us. you know, us. Because it's not, we're put on here to serve and not to selfishly indulge mm -hmm. and covetousness and stuff like that. So it's just like, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. That's kind of what I learned from like grieving, I think. You have to be willing to go through the process and all the hills and bumps. And sometimes it may feel like you're not making progress. But as long as you're still pursuing, as long as you're still in the process, there is pro progress being made because we may not always get to see everything. What is that? That's faith. Yeah. Huh. You know? Mm -hmm. And faith is the substance of things hoped so for, the evidence of things not seen. So you can't always trust what you see. Yeah. But that's why we depend on Him, because He sees and knows all. You know, mm -hmm. so it's like well, that's why faith, you have not to. By sight. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. why you have to keep keep on walking, just like He yeah. was saying. You know, and um, surround yourself with people. Uh, who have a deep passion and love for God and yeah. are sound in their relationship with God and sound in who they are and sound in the rock, you know? Yes. So so that you, each one of y'all could be accountable and to uplift one another. Yes, because yeah. that's why we're called to fellowship because it's we, we need each other. You yeah. didn't put us on this earth to just to be by ourselves. You're right. Like, that's why you have a longing sometimes to just be right. like, I need to go see my sister like I need to go I need to get out you know because the devil wants us to keep it by ourselves and keep us in the mindset of imprisonment that we're the only ones going through this and that we're the only ones that we're this cause of this problem like all of this problem is our, our fault you know it's mm -hmm. just like it's not the case you have to seek you have to seek him and he will reveal everything that you need to know all the questions yeah. it may not be in your timing mm -hmm. <laughs> it may not be in your timing but like that our pastor says it will all be revealed <laughs> but it will be revealed in time, time. Mm -hmm. but that's why we have to abide in his presence and in his word yes and it's in fruits of the spirit especially patience mm -hmm. patience <laughs> is not it's, Patience has been my word. <laughs> it is something else. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's something that he's been teaching me for a very long time. Which that's something, you know, we should always be open to learn and even relearn. Because it's, it's like, um, 
You know, we're not perfect until we see the perfect one. Yeah. So, like, it's, it's always good to keep an open mind. And like De David says, you know, creating a clean heart and the right spirit. And, you know, God is close to the broken hearted. Like, mm -hmm. He really is. You just have to put on different perspectives and different lenses. Because he's always there. The comforter is always there. And he's right. always, always has been there. Mm -hmm. But he's waiting to be acknowledged by you. You're right. And he loves you deeply. Mm -hmm. But it's a process. It is. And it won't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. But it's a period of that you start so that it won't produce any negative or unwanted. They're kind of Ooh, fun, actually. Uh, <laughs> so don't worry. I'm just kidding. We are anxious for nothing. All right. <laughs> so, do you remember the first time you played with me? Girl, no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I really like. What is the first time? Okay, so I'm gonna tell you because you don't. Because that <laughs> no, listen, y'all. Because when you get that saying, you never know. What is it? <laughs> You do not know the value of something until it's gone. That's why it's so important to not take for granted the spiritual gift things that God has blessed you with, to, to grab onto it and to use it to glorify Him, and to not use it to glorify yourselves or to be ashamed of the spiritual gifting that God has given you. Because when it's gone, it's like a part of you has left. And that's literally how I felt when I was injured in 2015, I was injured for four to five months, could not play at all. I was, I was injured July 2015, all the way till November, December. And I could not play my instrument. I remember going to bed every night, crying myself to sleep. It was a really tough time. And that's why it's so important, do not take the spiritual gift things that God has given you for granted, okay? And so I remember it was like the time where I was starting to like learn and um, to get back into playing and stuff like that. And so I remember we were in our um, orchestra director's office and Ray had a cello and I got my violin out and I played with her, I don't know what we played. But that was the best feeling ever because I was like, my God, number one, I get to play with an awesome black cellist, okay? So, I thought that was cool. And number two, you know, and she's really good. Thank God. God, you know, has blessed her greatly. And number two, um, it just, it was very emotional for me because it's like, I wasn't able to play before, you know? So, um, yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> All right, so the last question. Do you have any advice mm -hmm. for any young musicians, you know, who want to pursue ministry full-time with their instrument? Congratulations on making that decision because it's a huge decision. It's not favored by the world in any type of way. But um, it's not always the most attractive um, thing to choose. But God knows our heart, and he's obviously placed that seed and that type of desire in you to want to see people healed and whole and full mm -hmm. on his presence and what you may bring in the room. The most important thing is that your motives are pure. Um, and that requires you to posture yourself in a way that you're directly in communication with the spirit so that the spirit can flow through you and produce the sound that is needed for that time and moment and in that room for those people. Um, but he's not able to move if you're in the way or if your flesh and your thoughts are in the way. 
which we're human, so we're obviously going to have thoughts, but you just have to train yourself to cast down every imagination, you know, and really speak the word against those thoughts and anything that tries to exalt itself above the spirit, you yeah. know, and above what he wants to do. And really consider it an honor and privilege that he's even choosing you to produce that sound for that moment and for those people. We could have mm -hmm. chosen anybody else. Mm -hmm. Could have given anybody else the same talent. Yeah. But you have something special that God has placed inside of you that he's wanting to share with his people. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, it's the most humbling and honoring position. Even though you may not, you know, it depends on where your heart and mind are with God and your walk with God. Like, we, we're supposed to not worry about what we're going to eat, what we're going to wear, stuff like that, and like, even money. Like, God tells us that favor, we need to find favor more profitable than silver and gold. And it's like, how do you do that <laughs> in this type of world? Because it's like, this world is built off of like green, you know, yeah, paper, money. <laughs> like money. And it's like, you know, how do you do that and still live? <laughs> you know, because it's like, but when you pursue, like Karen says, you know, the provision will come. You know, you will supply everything. You will supply the place to stay. You will supply the food. You just have to be willing to seek and move when he tells you to move. And that's the scary part. Yeah. But you have to be willing to walk in water. It's not always going to be him holding your hand and guiding you everywhere. But it may be him being there, mm -hmm. but watching you from afar to see what you're going to do. You know? Yeah. So I think first and foremost, your motives need to be pure. You need to be doing this first and foremost for God. And with utmost humble and meekness yes and um, definitely spend time with the gift that God has given you and really practice and hone in on it because <laughs> the thing about the kingdom of God is you're always learning something new yes. and the spirit can always bring something that you couldn't even conceive of <laughs> surely can because I know in my <laughs> I'm called to practice every single day and everything is spirit led. I have to mm -hmm. consecrate myself before I'll practice and I'll say, you know, Holy Spirit, God, my hand in the sky, my fingers, where my heart moves and desires be unto you. Mm -hmm. I give myself to you now, Father, guide my hands and my thoughts because He can guide your thoughts. Like, there's, I remember I told you one time that I, He was like, you know, okay, start out the B day. And I was like, <laughs> like what? But he, he can be very specific if you let him and if you'll hear him, he'll he'll tell you exactly what to do. And sometimes you won't even know what you're doing. Like, mm -hmm. Just be open and receptive to what the spirit is wanting to do. Because that's what the spirit wants. The spirit is looking for someone who's willing and open to Yes. So I would just, you know, really, one thing that we strive to do at Encounter, just even with like the worshiping, we have to be worshipers first. Yes. And so, to be a worshiper, that takes a certain vulnerability and honesty and truth in your worship. And I feel like once you can really access that, that can really begin to open new doors into the, the anointing and sound that he's placed inside of you, the voice that he's placed inside of you, and all that he's wanting to do through you. Yes. Um, so I just feel like, you know, absolutely, <laughs> I don't know, I feel like I've been talking about the modus thing, but it's really, it's, it's really important, modus, like, you know, it's really important because if, like, if your modus are off, you know, you, that sound, it's not going to be the same. Like it's gonna be done from a human you effort, not move. you know. So that sound, it won't be what he had desired, but it'll be tainted mm -hmm. because Don't you have decided to say, "Oh, well, I, yeah, you know, I have studied here for several amount of years. It doesn't that matter. Is a, that is the only reason why this sound sounds the way it is." No. 
God has blessed you to be able to go mm-hmm. to cultivate that sound. You're right. So that you can understand why the sound, the basis of the sound, so that yes. when you when you give it to Him, He can use it. He can move it mm-hmm. in any type of way that He He wants to. You're right. So that's <laughs> I guess that's how I feel about you know just the motives and um, your relationship with God. Mm-hmm. Need to be. <laughs> right <laughs> you know because it's like I think that's one thing that I didn't learn when I was younger um, I grew up like in churches playing in churches and stuff like that and what I always noticed is that the musicians would always go out when like the word was given I was like I don't know why they, why did they go out you know it's like you know they started drinking some water you know like when you're waiting you're at a restaurant they ask you what you want to drink first, obviously. So he's like, okay, water. <laughs> um, water with lemon. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so you get water. And then, you know, you never order. Mm-hmm. You never order food. So you defeated the purpose of, you drove all the way mm-hmm. to the restaurant just for water. And then you never did get the bread of life. You know, mm-hmm. so it's like, you didn't finish your meal <laughs> like you halfway like <laughs> you're yeah. halfway in right now yeah so i just feel like you know that's one thing that should be important as well like you yeah. know you're not the pastor no you're not the evangelist but god is the type of god that he'll use this in any type of way in any type of shape or fashion you could be the walking evangelist down to the Dollar General. But because you weren't in your word, you know, daily, like he was asking you to do, you, you don't have that that word that'll make the sick heart glad, you know? So it's like, I think it's important to really take time to get to know God, yeah, and to get to know the sound that He's wanting to produce out of you, and to get to know Him, like you guys, mm-hmm. you guys should be one. You guys are a commitment, and yeah. you can't half know God just because He's giving you a gift. The gift is just something that makes room, but before the gift is you, and before you is the Father. Yeah. So, you have to get to know the Father so that everything can be connected. There will be no disconnection. Mm-hmm. And so that way, you can partake in the full meal. Yes. And you'll be complete in Him. Yes. So, I just think it's important to recognize that your relationship with God and how deep you're going can also have an effect on your sound. And, you know, those are two of the most important things I feel like he's been telling me, you know, like, yeah. even though, you know, you, you may be a musician in these seasons, but you also may be a musician and an evangelist in the next, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's right like, there. but if you're not storing up the word, if you're not sharpening your sword during yeah. those seasons, you know, even though you don't like you may not like that season all the time. Yeah. But if you're not constantly fulfilling filling yourself up with the word, mm-hmm. then you're not going to be prepared yeah. for when you get to that season. Or you never will get to that season because you didn't do what you need to do here. And the, uh, so season. instead, you're going to be stuck in that same rut. Yeah. So, as our pastor says. So I just think motives relationship mm-hmm. sound mm-hmm. those are big things i feel like yeah <laughs> yeah cool well <laughs> okay yeah i'm over here laid back <laughs> but yeah um that didn't come overnight y'all <laughs> yeah. like the stuff i'm telling you about i had to live it <laughs> like and that's you know and that's all part of testimony and you know like when you look up the definition of testimony because you hear 
Revelation 12, 11. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Blood of the they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. And you, when you look up the definition of testimony, it's all, it's like reputation, witness, like the different definitions for testimony, witness. And you use your testimony to witness to others, to bring hope to others. Just like what we were talking about earlier, that's why I love Food for Thought so much, is because what people don't understand or maybe even realize is that the questions that, I mean, are given through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, they're question, they're sharing parts of their testimony. Your testimony is your entire life. Even if it's you um, first potty training at the age of three, that's a testimony, <laughs> you know? Every single aspect of your life is a testimony. Every single person is a living and walking testimony. And your testimony is continuously being written until this very moment and so on and so forth. And so it's very important to know that your testimony is important and it can bring hope to others. No matter how small you think it is. Yeah. And the small things in the kingdom of the Mm-hmm. Yeah. And your testimony, it, it not only helps you, but it's like a double effect because you overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. Because now that what we went through the trials and tribulations that we went through and the experiences that we went through what we learned, we could use it to share others and we could spread light to it because once it's it's in the light, the devil cannot use that to try to bring you back or to shame you or to guilt you into things or to condemn you. And it could also be used, like we were talking about earlier, to bring light to other people's situations to show that you can be delivered from this or, hey, let me just explain to you how God helped me through this, you know, whatever you're going through. And you're an answer prayer every time you speak mm -hmm. about that. Like, you never know. Yeah. Like, you'd be talking to one person, but somebody on, like, aisle seven can hear you. You know? It's yeah. Like, <laughs> you never know. So just mm -hmm. walk in obedience no matter how crazy it is. Yeah. Let him use you. But I just wanted to thank you, Ray, for coming on here. You know what I mean? And this is a good time for you to come on. You know, this wasn't a mistake. Because we weren't actually supposed <laughs> to film it. Right. Uh, I said, girl, what day. am I wearing? Yeah. <laughs> but it's amazing how God, you know, plans things out. And listen, she was preaching over here. Over here. So I was like, <laughs> that was Holy Spirit. Yeah, like, the Holy Spirit was using you very greatly. And um, Ray is a wonderful woman of God. She has grown exponentially. Yeah, she would know. Um, <laughs> You know, and I'm just really grateful um, for her friendship and just, you know, like growing friendship, growing friendship and for having her in my life. Likewise. You know, God has really blessed me with her, you know, um, and it's amazing. Yeah. Y'all just don't. Y'all yeah. just don't. No, I'm telling y'all. Uh, so I'm just really grateful for her. Yeah. So hallelujah. So definitely <laughs> if you want, I'm I'm laid back. So definitely, you know, like, comment, subscribe, share, you know, and yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs>